I'm, I keep packing around losing it. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I got it. Oh, I had one out there, but I lost it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many did it today to just lift up a praise? Amen. How many want something from this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad that we were able to come in this place this morning. Amen. Just like we are in all the circumstances that we may be in today. Offer it up unto God. And our God is able. Somebody ought to say able. I said he's able this morning to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could hope or think. Hallelujah. 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 We got some things here. God is so good. I want to tell you, I woke up this morning thinking about that. We have gotten just recently finished up a platform. Hallelujah. God provided. I said, God provided. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. God provided. Hallelujah. There's people that blessed us. Amen. With all the material, all the material, and then we were blessed with the labor, hallelujah, that put this thing together, praise God. Great things that we serve a great God, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We've got a brother today that's going to share the word of God with us in the fields of missions that he's in today, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's our responsibility to pray for them. Amen. Encourage them. Help them along the way. Praise God. He's got his family. I'm going to let him introduce all of them later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. they all preachers, probably. they all preachers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, God is good. God is good. And all the time, all the time, God is good. God is so good. Well, I will praise Him. I'm gonna I praise, will praise him. him all the time. All the time. All the time. Come on, y'all can God go ahead and do better than that. Come on. God is good. All the time. All the time. And all the time. And all the time. My God, God is good. Is good. God is good. He woke me up this morning. Oh, 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 oh. Always be my closest friend, and I will serve him until the very end. God is good all the time, and all the time. God is good. I will praise him. I will praise him. I will praise him all the time. One more time. One more time. Well, God is good. God is good all the time. All the time, my God, well, he woke me up this morning, close, and in my right mind, he'll always be my closest friend, and I will serve him until the very end. God is good all the time, and all the time. Yes. Hallelujah. He's worthy, I said this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah, we thank you, 
Worthy of all the praise, Hallelujah. all the glory, all the, glory, all the honor. All God is praise, good, not just part of the praise, time, but all, all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good, good yes. father. Hallelujah. 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 How many knows he brought you here today? Amen. Standing uprightly. You, Lord, Hallelujah. With breath you, in your lungs today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. God's got you, something Lord. designed and purpose for Thank you today. You, Whatever the need you Hallelujah. have, he said, I'm ready to meet your yeah. need. Right where you're at. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. We love to you today, Lord. He's always been that way. He always wants to be oh, that way. God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to tell you something. God, first of all, don't have no Thank ugly you, children. No. <laughs> he got beautiful Hallelujah. children. Hallelujah. Yes. God is not going to give you a rock when you need a piece of meat. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. You, He's able to quench the thirsty soul. Hallelujah. Yes. This morning. Hallelujah. There's some churches today will get up and they'll do all these other things. But let me tell you this. If it ain't God, it ain't worth it. Hallelujah. Hello, y'all. Hallelujah. Got to be God. Hallelujah. Got to be God. Hallelujah. Brother Larry, I want you to come up here. Brother Larry is a men's ministry leader. I want him to recognize some people. And then we're going to jump off and just praise about knee deep. All right. And then about knee deep, we're going to start getting up about chest high. That means your voices are going a little bit higher. Hallelujah. And then about that time, it's going to get over your head. <laughs> You're going to be saturated, <laughs> hallelujah, Amen. with the praises Amen. of God. All right. Man, we thank the Lord for the men of this church. Right. And I tell you, God's assembling men yeah. of, of great valor and, yeah. and strength. Yeah. And I, I want to say thank you. To the men that came out, let's start with Daniel in the lion's den. Yeah. <laughs> I call it Daniel in the lion's yeah. den back Hallelujah. there. Thank him. He come out. Brother Jeffrey right here. I right hear yeah. he came out. Yeah. All right. Brother Michael right yeah. here. Stand up, Mike. Stand up, Brother yeah. Michael. These guys dedicated their time, their energy. I'm telling you what, they are incredible. Yes, sir. Incredible. There's three other guys. Uh, that also uh, they are not here. Uh, my son, my helper, and yep. then Lance. Yeah. And I'm going to say something. I Go might, ahead I on. might get reprimanded. That's, that's all you want. I want to. Go on I, want, I want to encourage you all, and I want to let you know how dedicated and devoted our pastor and his yeah. wife are yeah. to this work. You're going to get reprimanded. Because instead of instead of coming to us to pay for this project. Out of his own heart and his desire and his knowing that his things going forward, he he willingly financed this part of the project. And Lance, I believe Lance, yeah, son-in-law, son yeah. son uh -huh. provided the financing for the carpet. Yes, sir. That's so right. ready, That's praise God. the Lord, isn't that neat? Yeah. So oh, I just you. want to thank you guys and and get around, shake your hands, and tell them how much you appreciate them, yeah. and if. If, if you're not already including our pastor and his wife in your daily prayers, oh, let's hold them oh, up. Yeah. Yeah. Hold them yeah. up in your prayers yes. every day, every morning. Yeah. Love you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you Hallelujah. know what? There's more coming. Amen. We, just, we haven't even scratched the surface. You know what I'm saying, brother? You know what I'm talking about? We haven't even scratched the surface of what Amen. God's going to do Amen. for us. Amen. I mean, he got something. Y'all are here for a designed purpose. Not because you called and said something else, because God ordained your time today. Hallelujah. Whatever the need has been, God's able to go exceedingly abundantly above and beyond that. Hallelujah. I look at the book of Psalms, and I found out that I've been old. I've been young, now I'm old. That's what it was. I wish I could go back that way now. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed yes, having to hallelujah. beg for no bread. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say today. Amen. So let's just pray right quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we enter into this, this special place today of praise, Lord, as we offer it up unto you, God, Lord, let it be a pleasing sound unto your ear. Hallelujah. Lord, all over heavenlies today, Lord, angels are, are circling about and listening. And, Lord, and you're saying, that's my babies right there. That's my babies right there.
about that praise. You see, because nobody can praise like the praises that we have for God today. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you today. Lord, as we, it's like a sweet aroma going up today, Lord. Get in your nostrils. Let it be a sweet smell. Holy, 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 holy Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of your glory this morning. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Whoever is disabled, enable them today, Lord. Hallelujah. Whoever is sick in body, they heal them today, God. Reach down, Lord. Pour out that oil of anointing, Lord. Destroy the yokes of bondage, Lord. If we've been held captive by all these worries and troubles of the world, you said whom the Son is set free is free indeed today, God. We walk in the freedoms and the might of Almighty God today. Bless your people. Bless your people. Bless your people today, God. Hallelujah. We come to worship. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever it is today you may be in, I wish you'd just go ahead and lift a hand unto the Lord and say, Lord, I'm just giving this to you today. It's much bigger than I am, but you are more than enough for me today. More than enough for me today. Hallelujah. 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 We nations today. Hallelujah. Lord, nations around the world today, God. Set your people free. Set your people free today. Minister to your people. Send those, Lord, that's willing to go. Oh, God, today. Send them, God. Pour out the anointing for them, Lord, to go. Provide for every need they have, Lord. Lord, you said in your word that you would have nobody, Lord, be lost. uh, But all come to repentance, God. We come to worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Bless your people, O God. Hallelujah, Lord. Minister to your people. Thank you, Jesus. Every need today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Live stream today. We speak to you out there in the airways today. We send a word to y'all. Just point your hand toward them screens today. We send a word to those that'll be viewing today and listening. Holy Spirit, move in their lives today. Whatever the problem, settle the issue today, oh God. Lord, restore the family that's been broken and torn up, Lord. Hallelujah. Bring the children back home, Lord, where they wandered off today, God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, sweet Savior. Hallelujah. Precious Lord, precious Hallelujah. Lord. Jesus, Lord, Jesus, God, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, Hallelujah. Lord, Almighty God, we serve. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. thankful for what God has done, for what he's doing, and for what he's going to do. Amen. So look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Oh, well, he healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. Oh, I'm going. 
are you, Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we come to worship you. You're a great God. You're a great God. Hallelujah, none can compare to you, Father. Come on, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise in the house today. It's his house. It's his house. We're in his house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we come to worship you, Lord. We come to give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah, you're holy, Lord. You're holy, Lord, holy, Lord. The splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. Yes, all the earth rejoice. Himself in light, darkness tries to hide, trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. Come on and sing how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All will see how great. How great. Of the goodness 
of God. And all my life you have been faithful, yes, so faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. And with every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. Hallelujah. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. So faithful. And all
the presence of Jehovah today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Almighty God. The King of Kings. Hallelujah. Troubles will vanish. Our hearts can be mended. Hallelujah. Don't leave the same way you came. Come on, give it to Jesus. In the presence of Jehovah, He's God Almighty. He's my Prince of Peace. Oh, my troubles. want to Hallelujah. say something really quick. The song that we sang before this one, Jesus. there's a part and it says, go to that one. It says that he's the lion and the lamb. Uh -huh. And we sing it just, he's the lion and the lamb. He's the lion and the lamb, but he's the lion and the lamb. What do we think of when we think of a lion roaring? He is fierce. He is big. He's not to be messed with. That's the God we serve. He's the lion and then he's the lover. He's the sweet Amen. God that loves you, that, that waves Amen. love over your life, that waves the banner of love. But he's also the fierce and mighty and yes. almighty roaring lion that will fight for you. He's fought, with, fought for me so many times, and he will fight for you. He is a roaring lion. He's the lion, and he's a loving God also. Let him fight for you. Realize how big he is. It says we're in the Prince of Peace, Jehovah. Who is Jehovah to you? Who is Jehovah to me? He's big. He's mighty. He's able. He's the lion, and he's the lamb. He's the lover, and he's the fighter. Let him fight. It's not our battle. Let him fight. Mandy, let him fight it. It's not your battle. And let him love you because he 
is the lion, the roaring lion, the strong and mighty lion, and the lamb. He's everything we need in one. If we need the fighter, he's the fighter. If we need the lover, he's the lover. If we need peace, he's the peace. If we need a bill paid, he's the money. Everything I need is in him. Everything I need is in him. Jehovah. We're in the presence of Jehovah. We're in the presence of the one that can do anything and everything. He's the lion and the lamb. He's the lion and the lamb. He's the lion and the lamb. tell you about my Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I was reminded we were singing that, how great God is. I remember a time I was, we was in prison ministry for a lot of years and all over the place, but I remember this young man in one of the institutions that we were in, and um, he was a uh, Young guy, you know, fairly young, younger than me. <laughs> I don't take much. <laughs> but anyway, he he came into the service that particular day and evening, and we were they had the choir and all that going on and singing and praising God, and 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 this boy was just sitting there with his head all down, you know, just like he had a weight over his head, like he had somebody tied a weight on his head and he couldn't lift it. When the praises got on, I remember coming up and the Lord began to administer goodness, passion. It's almost like speaking, God was speaking directly to that young man and showing him that somebody's thinking about him. Somebody cares about him. And I remember him coming up to us after the service and he said, you know, all I really needed was a friend. I just needed a friend. And he said, I found a friend. I said, I found a friend. His name is Jesus. <laughs> He's a friend that's thinking closer than a brother. Hallelujah. If, and that's what you do. We got people here today, your brother John and his family, going to share with you about people that, that need to have a friend like that. Word burning in his soul and spirit to share with others. Amen. Hallelujah. 
we're getting short on time, y'all. We ain't get, got time to get caught up in all the programs. All right. Let's get caught up in the spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's do that. <laughs> that works. Hallelujah. Programs change dependent on who's writing them up. But Jesus is the author yes. <laughs> and the finisher of our faith. Amen. So let's welcome Brother John and his family today. Yeah. Come, brother. Share your heart with us. Yeah, good deal. Thank you so much. Man, that was great. Thank you guys so much for that time with the Lord. Just outstanding. Isn't it nice to just spend time with the Lord and praise Him and exalt Him and just feel His presence? Uh, uh, hey, we are going to introduce, I'm going to let my family uh, introduce themselves and then, uh, and then, uh, and then I'll, I'll speak back here. I'm Juliana Tilden. I'm Atea, and I'm six, I'm seven years old. This is Corbin, and he's ten. Oh yes, we have a joke that we were talking about telling, and she would. Uh, the plan was that she was going to tell it because uh, we 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 can. You you want to do the answer? Okay. So she's going to do the punchline, then I'll do the, the all right. Um, let's see here. Uh, how did Boaz make all his money before Naomi came back? He was ruthless. <laughs> oh! Uh, I think we made that up, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But anyway, we have fun trying to make things up. So. Uh. My favorite color is rainbow, and Corbin's favorite color is blue and orange. So we uh, minister to refugees and immigrants in St. Louis, and we use that to share the love and message of Jesus, primarily with Muslims, but um, God's opened the door to other um, cultures and religions as well. So. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty amazing, and the Lord has really given us some favor the last year and a half. So we'll talk about who we work with and how that all happens and everything. But uh, we're really thankful for the, what you know, the Lord has brought us to, called us to, all those things. And, and so uh, just thank you for allowing us to be here and to share with you. Thank you for all the prayers, all the financial support. And uh, we're just, just glad to be here and, and looking forward to sharing with you. And I know we have some slides, so I'll probably say, you know, next slide, that kind of thing, Dan, when we, when we get to that. So, guys, anything else you want to wanna say before? No? Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for, yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> Good deal. Well, um, we are going to uh, talk about uh, what the Lord has called us to and to whom he's called us, because it's always about the people, right, not the place. The Lord has called us to work here, at least up to this point. I'll just tell you, I would love to be, uh, uh, for the Lord to call us, I would love to live in another country. I'll just tell you. I'm just being open. I would love, we spent some time in China, which wasn't planned on talking about, we probably won't. But like, I would love to be living in another country. But we're where we think the Lord wants us to be, which is, which is St. Louis, Missouri. And that's what he wants from each one of us, right, is just a, a obedience and a willingness to to say, you know, use me, send me, whatever the case is, right? So that's, that's our situation. Some of that, we feel like, is for the health care uh, situation that um, St. Louis has for, uh, for our, the needs that we have uh, for our son and for our family. And so, but God's a good God who cares about us, right? And, there was a, and so uh, we're just super thankful um, that the Lord's taking care of us, that we can serve him um, and the way he wants us to, and that he's taking care of us the way that he's taking care of us. So, yeah. We are going to talk a little bit about today uh, some things that's not maybe necessarily the, the most fun uh, topics ever, uh, talking about living far from home and what that's like and uh, how we should behave when we uh, are, are living far from home and how we should treat other people when they are living far from home. And so um, that's just kind of uh, the reality, isn't it, that uh, we're not home, right? We're not and so we're going to talk about that. And so uh, here's, here's the verse that uh, I'm going to read, Deuteronomy chapter 10, part of verse 18 and verse 19, talking about God. He shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. So you too must show love to foreigners. For you yourselves were once foreigners 
in the land of Egypt. Right? So Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 18 and 19, God shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. So you too must show love to foreigners, for you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. Let's pray. Father, we love your heart. We love being loved by you, and we ask you for you to give us your heart and your love for others. Sometimes it's easy to love people. Sometimes it's not easy to love people. But you've called us, and you've gone to such great lengths. You've sent Jesus. Jesus, your obedience to go on the cross, to do for us what we could not do for ourselves, that you were willing to, be, to go on the cross. What a painful death, that you'd be willing to die for us. And uh, you've gone to such great lengths. And you help us love people. And we ask you for that help, to love people. It's easy to love people who are nice to us. Lord, help us love people when they're not nice to us. Help us to love everyone. Help us to love the way you love. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, give us your heart. In Jesus' name, give us your heart for people who are long from home, who are far from home but yet who long to live in their home. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 10, and verse, parts of verses 18 and 19. Deut you're welcome. Deuteronomy chapter 10, part, uh, verse eight, part of 18 and 19. God shows love to the foreigner living among you and gives them food and clothing. Talking to the Israelites, so you too must show love to foreigners, for you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. This idea of living far from home, um, not being able to live where you want to live, uh, and but longing to li live at home, is sometimes referred to as living in exile. And that's something that we can see in the Bible in multiple places, and uh, as early as, as Adam and Eve, I mean at the beginning, right? In the beginning. And so when they sinned, uh, they no longer could live in the Garden of Eden. Cain killed Abel. He was banished, sent to the east, no longer to live where he wanted to live. The Israelites, the Israelites, uh, when uh, Babylonians conquered Jerusalem, when Jerusalem fell in 586, I think it is, B.C., they had to go to uh, live in Babylon. Once the Israelites began to live in Babylon, they had to decide how they would live. Would they constantly be revolting, rebelling against the, the, the government and these people who were godless people in so many ways and a, and a, a culture that was godless in so many ways and a, 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 um, a government that was godless in so many ways? Would they constantly be rebelling against uh, the government and all of those, all of those things, or, would, or that's one side, or would they completely be buying into the Babylonian way of life completely, including worship? That's the other side. This is a question that every believer, every one of us, needs to answer. It's a question every one of us needs to answer, even today. Why? Because in the Bible, Babylon ends up becoming a symbol of any human institution, and I love this quote, a symbol of any human institution that demands allegiance to its idolatrous redefinitions of good and evil. Isn't that the world? Human institutions that demand allegiance to its idolatrous redefinitions of good and evil. So even today, no matter what city we live in, whether it's Raymore, whether it's Kansas City, St. Louis, Kabul, Afghanistan, whatever city we live in, how do we live in that city of Babylon? How do we do it and live well? Jeremiah, t Jeremiah tells the people to pray for the peace of Babylon. This is how Jeremiah handled it. He told them to pray for the peace of Babylon. Pray for the peace of Babylon and seek the welfare of the city. Isn't that difficult? I mean, they're godless people. Like, 
pray for their welfare. I mean, that's, that's the Lord's heart. Like, and if we're going to do that, we need the Lord's help to do that. You know what I mean? Plant gardens, make a life, bless the, the, the city, bless uh, and, and make a life and, and, uh, um, and, uh, and but, but do not adopt their gods. No matter the Jews' situation, no matter where they lived, no matter the season of life they were going to and going through, they were never to stop worshiping Yahweh, right? As it is with us, as it is with us, we are never to worship whatever our idols might be. Financial freedom that money brings, which is a re especially in, in wealthier countries like the United States. Or the worship of, of the kind of lifestyle that we want to live. Man, that's a big one too. That also kind of comes with the financial freedom, you know, to be able to live the kind of life that you want to live. We're never to have that as an idol, to put that before God, before living the way God wants us to live, serving him the way he wants us to serve him. Are you guys following me on that? Right. Yeah, right. it's important. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. Man, we have so many things in our culture. Um, and this is not about abortion, but I'll just say that so many times, and it's not always this for this reason, but so many times abortion is about that idol of w wanting to live the way that I want to live. Right. And now I have this, I can't live the way I want to live because this is not what I planned for. And uh, money is going to be given this way and I won't be able to do this. Um, I just found out and, and I'm not I'm not saying me personally but uh, that this 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 little child in the womb is, is whatever gonna have a disability and this is not what I planned on my life looking Are you guys following me right. no matter what season of life or what happens we are never never to stop worshiping the Lord yeah. and start serving and worshiping our idea of what we want our life to look like So how do we live in our exile well? Jesus said it this way, give Caesar what is Caesar's, give God what is God's. Does that make sense? I'll just tell you, we love both of our kids equally. Um, Matea is so easy to take care of in so many ways. And... Uh, uh, and um, not everything is equal, uh, how much time uh, and, 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 and stress. Are you guys following me without wanting to go into too much detail? But, uh, but man, we love them both equally. And we're so thankful for Corbin. But how do we live in our exile well? Give Caesar what is Caesar's, give God what is God's. We've already been talking about it, but we Christians do live in exile. This is not our home. Where is our home? Let me hear it. Amen. What does Paul say? Our citizenship is where? Heaven. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice to say it? Nice to hear it? Nice to just sit and relax and soak in it? Our citizenship. Our citizenship. This is where we belong. Yes, we live here now, but this is not our home. This is where we belong with the rights of a citizen of heaven. Yes. Come on. Yes. Just sit and rest in the love of the Father. Yes. Yes. Our citizenship is in heaven. Yes. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, we eagerly await a Savior from there. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, we work with, with a lot of refugees. Most refugees, most, most of those folks who come to the United States because they have to, because of war or something like that, most of those folks are Muslim folks. And how we long for them to be able to say, and to be able to say that they are eagerly waiting for their Savior to come. Refugees certainly live in exile. They live far from home, and they wish they could go back to the country that they came from. And they, they have heartbreaking stories. They do. 
Uh, we uh, were focused on Bosnians for a while, and Bosnians, there's, I don't know, at least 50,000 or so in the St. Louis area. It used to be more like probably 70,000, but the former country of Yugoslavia uh, kind of split up into different countries now, like Croatia and Serbia and, and Bosnia, Herzegovina, and, and a couple of others. But there was a civil war that happened. There's the Eastern or there were Christians by name, n not being Christ-like, not following Jesus, but they did some horrible things to the Bosnian Muslims, the Bosniak people. And, uh, um, and so many of them, it, it was basically a genocide. Uh, and, and so many of them had to leave and uh, their stories are just um, horrible. But uh, you have a, a neighbor one day and then, and then they're trying to kill you. And so anyway, many Bosnians had to leave many of the Bosniak people. And like they, even after the war, they didn't have a home to go back to because their, their neighbor, Christian neighbor, took their house, <laughs> moved into their house. So anyway, they don't have homes to go back to. That's the Bosnians. We delivered food to a family from Africa during the pandemic. We were doing this, delivering food uh, to different families um, from different places around the world who are now refugees living in the St. Louis area. And I was delivering food to a family from Africa, I think originally from the Congo. And um, they, had, they had been in their refugee camp for 20 years. And, I mean, that's a generation. Like their kids didn't know anything other than the refugee camp. So the situation, refugee situation around the world is just is is terrible. I mean, I, I I'm sure there's most refugees it, it now going on than ever in the world, and I think it's just kind of getting more and more. But it is an opportunity. It really is an opportunity, not only in the refugee camps, but like those folks are now on the move and they're going to be going to Europe or United States or someplace like that, right? And so the opportunity that we believers have, those of us who by God's grace know the Lord, who can share the gospel with them, I mean, that's an immense uh, opportunity, but an immense responsibility that we have to do that, I believe. But heartbreaking stories. Uh, we've been working the last year and a half or so, especially with a lot of Afghans. You guys remember the Taliban taking over Afghanistan about a year and a half ago? That was a, that was a huge deal. And, um, and so a lot of the folks the last year and a half that we've been working with are, are Afghans. And this is a country you can't even get into. I don't think we in the AG even had missionaries. We're allowing our missionaries to go to Afghanistan. This was before a year and a half ago because of the, the danger involved. I could be wrong about that. Um, now, certainly, the danger is, is way, 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 way more now. The Taliban's taken over, and, man, we, I mean, we've talked, we know a lot of people now, so it's been interesting to learn about Afghanistan, and I'll just, on a side note, really is a, a horrible situation right now. There's not, there's not money, there's not a lot of food, uh, the Taliban's in control, there's other, um, other uh, terrorist organizations that are on the rise within Afghanistan. So now those terrorist organizations are, you know, bombing each other and you know what I mean? Like it's, I mean, it's the, it's the world. It is the world. It is a, it's a bad one. Like it is the world. Does that make sense? Uh, so just a couple of stories, the heart of refugees, that the people, folks that we know have met that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so one family, they, you know, you remember they were all trying to get into the, uh, to the uh, airport. You guys remember that? Trying to get into the airport, climbing the walls of the airport. And man, there's a really a vivid image of, of, uh, of uh, hanging on, yeah, hanging on to the airplanes and you know, that kind of thing. Like it was desperate because they knew that there was a really good chance that the Taliban was going to kill them. And I, I mean, I've talked with the guys. A lot of the guys we know were in the either Afghan military or were interpreters helping the U.S. Army. But like they, now those who are left behind like have to run for their life and the Taliban wanted to kill them. Or, or if, even if it was the Afghan military, they're making them pay for every year they were in the Afghan army. Like it's just, it's just using power. It's what the world does, using power, right? To do what they want to, to the ones who is, has less power. That's the way the world works. That's the way that we work without the Lord's um, help within us and work within us with his spirit, right? But anyway, so one family was, was uh, um, you know, trying to 
get in, have to get, go access into across the wall, you know, and get get inside. And uh, Taliban guy with the, the butt of his gun, his rifle. She was pregnant. He was like hitting her in the in the you know in the stomach. And uh, they went back about seven times, and finally a, a Taliban guard l let him in. But um, you know, really nice family. Um, Another Afghan was at a, a Taliban security point trying to make his way to the airport. They were just outside the airport. A terrorist bomb exploded. Now, there was one or two that exploded during that week or so that we were, you know, they were letting us get everybody out. Uh, he was seriously injured in this bomb that exploded. He was seriously injured. Uh, he was flown uh, to safety, like helicopter, helivacked out or whatever, but his family didn't make it out. So now he's in the U.S., his family's still there. That's the beautiful thing about what's been happening the last 10 years. We're going to lay in a little bit. We're going to talk about three big changes going on in our world. Two of them has been going on for a long time, and one of them just the last few years that has to do with technology, that, that has to do with missions, right? So, yes, he's, as far as I know, and, and, and this particular guy, I'm not sure uh, for sure, but I think he does have contact with his wife. And so, the pro hopefully, Lord willing, the family's going to be able to leave. But that's, that's a. We don't know. Another guy was had his family. They were coming to a checkpoint. Trying to, he had been in the in the Afghan army, and uh, the guards would not let his older kids, the teenagers, go past the checkpoint. And he had some young kids, and he had some teenagers. So he's like, "Man, what do I do? Like, do I do I stay here and maybe die from the Taliban or uh, pretty serious persecution?" Or, or, or do I leave my older teenagers with, with my you know, extended family? And so he chose to go ahead and leave the teenagers with his extended family, come to the U.S. And um, the good thing is he does. I mean, he talks with his kids, his teenagers, like, I don't know if it's literally daily, but nearly daily, like with, 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 with his phone, with WhatsApp, if you're not with social media. Like, so... Um, that's huge. I mean, that's 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 such a, uh, a, a such a tool that the Lord is using. That's uh, within missions these days. That's different in the possibilities now. Now that we have uh, social media, now that people can talk uh, to anywhere in the world, anyone in the world, instantly. I mean, that's what's going on. Is is uh, the Lord is bringing folks here, and we want to reach them with the gospel here. And help them reach their own friends and family. Because I'm telling you, they do go back every day. Like every day they're going back to their own home, homeland and friends and family. And they're doing that with their phone, with social media. Maybe it's WhatsApp, if you're familiar with that. That's been really common for us. A lot of the, every Afghan and a lot of the Central Asian countries. Uh, a lot of folks in Africa use WhatsApp. If it's, if it's, if it's further east in Asia, I've heard, I think like... Um, like Thailand, I think they use something called Line, but it's the same deal. Like it's a social, uh, um, uh, social media situation where they can just talk with their family. I mean, how amazing is it that they can come here, learn about Jesus, and then share that with their friends and family? I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, there was a time when the, we were just talking about this, I'm telling you, there was a time when the only way to reach someone far away was literally to go there yourself. And, I, and if the Lord wants you to do that, by all means do it. But I'm telling you, that's not the only way to reach people far away anymore. I'm telling you, the last 10 years regarding missions and the changes in the world, there's another way to add to going there. And that is to reach them here and have them help and reach their own friends and family, yeah. which they are communicating with daily. Yeah. I mean, I'll be talking with one, and they'll be like, oh, hold on, I need to call my mom, you know, yeah. talk to his mom. They'll be WhatsApp, why we're, in, why we're together. They'll be like, they're friends back in Afghanistan. We can't, you know, we can't even get into Afga Afghanistan. Yeah. They're getting into Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> and they tell about the road. That's cool. Yeah. It is cool. It is cool. So, the world is changing, missions is changing because of it to keep pace. That's what, kind of what the Lord is doing. He's uh, bring, opening up these possibilities. And so, it's uh, so what we want to do. Try to make the most of that, what the Lord has in the situation of being able to reach them here and help them reach their own friends and family. Yeah. 
and they and they don't go back once every ten. They might physically go back once every however many years because it takes thousands of dollars to to take their family, usually with a lot of kids, right, and take their family and fly them all back and stuff. They may physically go back once every few years, but no, they're going back every day. So we serve at two Christian organizations uh, who help, as we like to refer to them often, new Americans, because that's what they are. Once the Lord has brought them here, they're new Americans. And so we work with mostly refugees. Uh, through these organizations, we get to work with folks from all over the world. And man, the Lord is really, um, they, it's, it, it's a great opportunity. And it's just built in working with refugees. It's just built in to be able to share the, uh, the gospel with them, to be able to give them Bibles, pray with them, talk to them about the Lord, like that kind of stuff. It's really a great um, kind of ministry, especially in the U.S., same thing in Europe, really. You know, the folks are going into Europe, too, as refugees. So, uh, yeah, we've been working with folks from uh, Europe, like three different continents, Europe, Asia, Africa. Those are the most folks from Europe, uh, Bosnians, but also Ukrainians from the, the war with Russia that's going on now, uh, from uh, Asia. And we'll, we have some slides, and I'll, I'll talk about these here in just a just a little bit here. We'll kind of go back and maybe I'll mention some stuff. But uh, from Europe, Bosnians, Ukrainians, from Asia, we're, uh, Syrians, uh, Afghans, um, a, a country called Azerbaijan, which is a little east of Turkey. Also folks from Turkey, uh, India, Bhutan, Nepal. Like there's all these different folks from different places living in like the South City, St. Louis area. And you start working with refugee organizations and man, you have contact with people from all over the world from Africa, Sudan, Liberia, Congo, Rwanda, Tanzania, then yesterday, uh, one of the organizations yesterday walked inside the building, there was a lady there from Madagascar uh, who speaks French, and um, so there's another one, Madagascar. At Oasis, we help with clothing, we help with cleaning supplies, furniture, sometimes Oasis is one of the first places that they, could, that they uh, go to when they have arrived. It could be days, weeks. The first couple years, they can kind of get get some help through this Oasis International, and so um, it's just a phenomenal way to um, be able to get to know them and to help the physical needs, which is important. The Lord wants us to do that, help folks when they're in a season of need, and then be able to help them um, with sharing the gospel with them, praying with them, giving them Bibles. Another one, Christian Friends of New Americans. What a great title, huh? Christian Friends of New Americans. We love that title. They do a lot of the same work, kind of a different little model, but um, with them, do, do a lot of English language learning, ELL. Um, and it's funny that, that the change from ESL to ELL. English as a second language, which is what sometimes we're familiar with at ESL. But they kind of say ELL these days because... It's a little more accurate because so many places in the world, when they're learning English, it's not their second language. They already know two or three languages. So when they're learning English, they're, ling they're learning like language number three or four. You know what I mean? So they changed it to ELL, English language learning, which is, a, which is probably, a, a, probably a better name. But it's, man, folks come and it's amazing. It's, they can speak so many different languages. And uh, yeah, I can be with one guy who's, who, man, one Afghan guy who uh, was not able to go to school. He, he had to sort of work as he could, even as a little guy, um, in whatever way, you know, for a little bit of money, but it helped, right? It helped the family. And so he was not educated, but man, he'll speak, he'll speak uh, two or three of the languages in Afghanistan, and, Af and on, the, on the west side is, is of Afghanistan is close to uh, Iran, so he can speak with the, the Farsi speaker, the folks from Iran. On the other side, he speaks the language on the other side of Afghanistan that's close to like Pakistan and close to India. So then all of a sudden, he's like, he's talking with the, 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 um, the Hindi speaking guys because he knows the language in, Af in Afghanistan that's similar to that language of Hindi. Like he's just flowing, operating with these different people from all over. And I'm like, this guy's not even, has a, like a formal education, but it's just amazing the world today with people moving everywhere, and the, it's just amazing. Like it, I mean, I'm from Southwest Missouri. Juliana grew up in Branson. Uh, I was born in, in Kansas City, but and lived in Blue Springs for about seven years. But we moved down to Southwest Missouri. So I grew up in Reed Spring, 
not the most, let's say, diverse area and all that. You know what I mean? Like, there's not refugee organizations in, in Reed Spring. And so, uh, so anyway, this is just really different for us the last few years. I mean, it's amazing. There's different people from everywhere right there. So anyway, it's just really good. Um, yeah. So with Christian Friends of New Americas, we do a lot of the English language help, but also driver's ed, and that's so much fun. The driver's ed, man. You're in there teaching folks to learn to drive. Some folks drove, I'll tell you what, some, the folks who drove in their home country are sometimes the ones who scare me the most because they're the less cautious. I already know how to drive. And they're like, oh, and they're like no, please, just look. You know, so that's the ones, but, but then you get the folks who are like in their 50s, 60s, ladies who, had, who never drove in their home, but now they're, they have an opportunity, and so they want to learn. And so that's a little bit scary because it's the first time. And, uh, you know, but anyway, it's a hoot. You'll have folks in there. I mean, yesterday, six different people helped with driving, driver's ed, with six in the car driving. And there'll be like three or four people in the car at the same time. And they could be, uh, I, w I wrote, this, wrote this down just as an example. There were six different people yesterday, three in the first hour, three in the second hour, and like that kind of. So here, these were the companies, uh, countries, six people from um, um, Nepal, Afghanistan, Syria, Rwanda. Four, six people, four different countries all over the world. Love it. In the same car, we're laughing. They're all kind of cheering for each other to, like, <laughs> like, to, to learn how to drive. Do you know what I'm saying? We're encouraging one another. They're learning about each other in the back seat. And you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really, it's pray before we leave. I'll ask them to pray. And sometimes I pray. Usually I'll pray unless I'll, I'll pray uh, out loud for everyone to lead us in prayer unless there I know there's a Middle Eastern person that I know is like like they don't want that you don't know you know what I mean like I was in one time I was praying before everyone one uh, uh, a guy from from India a Hindu guy um, asked me to pray because that was the regular and I didn't that time and so he we were driving and then he was like hey we didn't pray will you pray so I started praying and after that like the guy a guy from the Middle East. Uh, I don't remember if it was Syria, but one of one of those countries where like serious like Islam, you know, and uh, but he, he turned on his phone and really loud. It was a, an imam, it's like a pastor, but an imam in, in preaching, you know, turned up really loud. I'm like, okay, I know what's going on here. Like he didn't appreciate us just praying, so I tried to be sensitive. If I know there's going to be tons of backlash, but mostly, no matter where they're from, usually they appreciate the prayer. They appreciate the prayer. You have the ability to pray, and pray in Jesus' name, and they appreciate it. They appreciate the opportunity to get behind the wheel and learn how to drive in the United States, and then we pray for safety, that the Lord would protect us. Okay, let's look at some of the slides here uh, about those two organizations that we work with. And, and we may have gone through them, but let's – can you go to the next slide? Yeah, so, man, just all kinds of different Bibles. We have a few of the resources there. If you want anything uh, that's on the table, you guys are welcome to. And we have one of the things we have that's not on, on the thing there is a nice little pamphlet about why Christian women should not marry Muslim men. For us, it might seem like that's a no-brainer, but I'm telling you, that's a thing. It's a thing for Muslim men coming to the United States to marry someone and it's, uh, who's, who's not a, uh, a Muslim. And it's even extra sort of kudos to them if it's a if it's a Christian lady, and the kids have to be Muslim, like there's no like that's a thing, and uh, so anyway that's uh, we don't need to get into all of that, but that's a we were talking with a lady a few months ago from a smaller town southwest Missouri, and uh, she married a, a a guy originally from Pakistan, nice guy you know all that, but he's a Muslim gentleman. And we know, we know, right? The Lord has told us. What has he told us about that? We don't want to be unequally yoked, right? It causes problems as it's causing problems with her in very serious ways. And she has going to have the consequences of having to, you know, of, of, of disobeying the Lord in different ways. There's consequences from that, right? And so uh, that's a real thing now that we need to be talking about with the people, the young women that we know, uh, about uh, how difficult that is your life is going to be if you marry a Muslim gentleman. So anyway, that's a nice a couple of those there that I want to plug that. <laughs> okay, next slide. Uh, Johnny and Friends Family Retreat. You guys know our son, uh, 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 
the, the, some of the situations that we're dealing with. And so the couple, last couple of summers, we have been part of, of Johnny and Friends, great ministry. Um, if you guys are not familiar with Johnny Erickson Tata, some of you are. She's been around a long time. She's now in her probably early 70s when she was 18. And I, it's so cool. I know a guy who knew her when they were in high school together. He was, she was the first like real believer that he knew. So it's really interesting to talk with him. And anyway, so she was 18, vivacious, athletic, all these kinds of things, dove off a rock, thought she could do a, a pike, which is the type of dive, and it wasn't deep enough broken neck and not able to move and thankfully her sister was there to like you know help her out of the water like she was face down couldn't move that'd be scary anyway so went through all the things you would imagine i want to die you know all that kind of stuff one thing that she said uh that is so touching to me is she, at, after times of wanting to die and not live because now what do i do i can't move she's used to moving and she said uh, god if i can't if i can't die show me how to live which is powerful to me. So, uh, so anyway, she's lived a life of, of ministry for the last, I don't know, nearly 50 years. I don't know how many, many years. But she paints with, you know, with her mouth and so has written books. And so her ministry, Johnny and Friends, one part of it is called Family Retreat, where they focus on having families who are impacted by disabilities. And they come, and it's about four or five days. And so we, we are now part of that, doing that, serving, leading worship at these things. We want so We know what it's... I'm just telling you. I'm just being real. We know what it's like to have some pretty serious disability needs, the stress, the time, the energy, all of these things that, um, that add up. And it's not like you're sick for two weeks and then you'll get well and things kind of go back to normal. Like it never stops kind of like slowly building and adding up. You know what I'm saying? Unless like there's some serious time with the Lord and that kind of stuff. So when we lead worship, we, we so much want their time with the Lord when we're leading worship to be yeah. so good for them because we know they need it. Yeah. And so anyway, folks, come. If, if you guys know folks who have disabilities in Missouri, even in the Kansas a little bit, um, it's all in that Missouri chapter. This is such a good ministry, Johnny and Friends. And then the family retreat is in August. So we just we want folks uh, impacted by disabilities to know that that's available. It's really good. Okay, next, next slide. Yeah, uh, Oasis International, and uh, man, this is such a good, we talked about it. They, those guys on the left are some Ukrainian families, so that's a, it's a recent thing going on uh, now with Russia and Ukraine. And top right, I think they're from Afghanistan, and then the bottom right, uh, Tanzania. And then some of the guys, some of the, those of us who serve the Lord there at Oasis, I mean, there are people from all over. There's a German nun, love working with her. German nun, man. Like, it's, I love it. There's just people from all over. The guy on our left is, is uh, originally from India. He spent 20 years in Kuwait in business working, but he had, like, he would start house churches. And, uh, I mean, he's just a phenomenal guy to talk with. Um, just, just really, the other guys, another guy's, a, the guy in the middle of the bright shirt is from Egypt. He's a pastor in Egypt. And um, um, the guy on the far right, He's a former police officer. So just like really interesting people that, that serve the Lord there and do a lot of great things, helping with, with clothing and furniture and things that people need when they arrive and don't have anything. Next slide. Yeah, we saw this one, folks trying to get in. Next slide. We have video. We couldn't, we were going to show video. Dan, this is a video of folks trying to, we have video that we couldn't, couldn't find. So I don't know what happened, but one of the Afghan guys shared with me of a, of a home video that a f guy he knows took outside of the wall of people trying to get into the airport wall and like the Taliban shooting the guns up in the air trying to push people back like get back go away go home you know that kind of thing but uh, maybe it's good we didn't find the video because it is a little bit kind of hard to watch but the hospitality is just off the charts Afghan hospitality is as hospitality with a lot of countries it's just usually way better than than what we're used to in the U.S. But you can go in, and they don't have much, but, like, they'll offer what is, it, Hospitality is so important that they, 
with the little money they do have, will make sure that they have something for hospitality. So they'll have that nice looking tray like that, maybe in nuts and cookies and tea, it's a big deal. So, I mean, we meet these folks with the organizations, but the real ministry and the real time with them happens after we've met them and we go to their home, that kind of thing. You, I mean, that's, you've heard this before from missionaries probably, but like in their home, drinking tea, eating with them, um, that's, man, that's where it's at. And so these ministries provide the opportunity to do that. And some of them, like the English language learning and the driver's ed are a little bit more ongoing. So that's kind of built in to begin something ongoing relationship. So it's just really good. But next slide. Baby showers. Juliana's part of helping them with baby showers and blessing them that way. Yeah. Next slide. Yeah, Matea gets to go to those too. <laughs> uh, uh, barbecues where uh, folks can go, and, and uh, those are good. Other Just more times to connect, build relationship. Yeah. Next slide. Christian Friends of New Americans. So that's an example of like Friday morning, Saturday morning, or Monday nights. So like they'll come in for English language learning, and you're just working with someone. And so it's just built in time to help them. with. And we want them to be blessed, right? We want them to be able to probably get a better job by being able to speak English, be better able to take care of their family or just have an easier time navigating life in the United States. We want that for them, yeah. and, uh, and it's built-in time to, to get for the relationship, so it's just really great. Uh, next slide. Fourth of July picnic that we had there. Hmm. Little girl from Afghanistan holding the flag in the middle. They're thankful. They're thankful. Thankful to be in the U.S. Next slide. Close, you know, give away. Next slide. A Turkish family that we uh, know and, and love and help with English and, um, yeah. Okay, next slide. There's uh, some some really cool things going on. So we'll, we'll kind of have four four like prayer requests that we'll mention, and um, uh, one of the one of the things going on that really surprised us was working at, at CFNA, helping with English. One morning, a group of, of of guys from India came in wanting to work on English, and then eventually drivers had to get their license. So we were working with them a few months, and then we found out that they had met another missionary. Uh, missionary David Godbout, who's also in St. Louis, and uh, he had been meeting with them. And anyway, they wanted the, they're 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 Hindi speaking, um, uh, but Hindu is their religion. But they wanted to learn about Jesus, and uh, wanted to learn about Christianity. And so we all uh, are now meeting, and um, uh, our part of it is leading worship on, mostly with David speaking. Uh, when he doesn't, sometimes um, I'll speak, but. Um, um, so that's where the dress came from, but that's them. So this is their story. This is how they came to the U.S. I mean, the world is such, we just talked about power, using power and how that's so common, what the world does. So they, they were human trafficking, which is a bigger and bigger thing these days. It doesn't ha have to mean necessarily a sex slavery, but, but like a slave as in working. And, and so their situation was uh, they were told by a company to come to the U.S. and help build this Hindu temple it's in New Jersey. And uh, it was 100 and some guys, but it was slave labor, $1.20 an hour, 90 hours a week, and they couldn't leave the compound, right? So one guy eventually died. The FBI was called and, and broke that up, um, and 20 of the guys were sent to St. Louis. And so when about eight of those, eight of those guys one morning came into the CFNA where I was going to work with, help with English and that's how I first got to know them and so but now um, most of the 20 10 to 12 I would say average will come weekly on a Sunday hearing about the Lord uh, missionary David Godbout has been a been doing a phenomenal job and we're um, helping as we can with work leading worship and helping them get their driver's license and um, it's just been really good but it's a good picture of the Lord like what a horrible situation that is. And the Lord took something that was bad and made something good come from it. And he does that so many t He does that so much in our lives. Sometimes we don't take the time to think about maybe as that. But man, he does that in our lives too. It doesn't have to be like, man, I was human trafficked. 
There can be other bad things going on that the Lord takes and then uses for good. So that's one, one really uh, a good prayer request, that those guys continue to learn about the Lord, continue to give their heart to the Lord. Uh, we know some of them are just really close, we feel like. And so, um, um, but then, so another, another good thing to pray about, and uh, I don't want to be sensitive about what we say online and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we do know that one thing that's exciting thing that's going on right now that Juliana gets to be part of is uh, there's a, a monthly uh, little gathering of, of women, uh, ladies only, and it happens once a month, and there's a devotional involved. They, they talk about um, uh, the Lord, talk about the Lord from the Bible uh, very uh, openly, like we're going to talk about the Bible. And there's about 15 to 20, would you say? 15 or so Afghan ladies coming to this, this Bible, monthly Bible study. That's a big deal. The pressure, the pressure from that culture is incredible. I was talking with an Afghan believer, and he said that um, the, the fear is so big uh, for people to find out that they're, the Afghan is a believer, that the, that the believers in St. Louis don't even talk to each other about being a believer. The fear is that their own family is going to be persecuted back in, in Afghanistan, which is a, a real thing. That would be a real thing even without the Taliban having taken over, as I understand it. But now that they've taken over, like it's, I mean, it's just, it's way different now with, now that they're in control. But the Lord really is control, right? So, um, so that would be another good thing to pray about is that, that Bible study. So those two things, a third one, and I'll move real quick, and then we'll finish. Two more really good things to pray about. Um, um, there is a guy, well, he could use prayer. There's a guy, the guy, I, don't know, I guess this dovetails the what craziness of the Taliban, and, but there's a guy I know who came here a couple of years ago, like a lot of the Afghans did, and then um, he got married. It was a, a, not the official kind of wedding that we have in the U.S. It was more of a Muslim wedding. Anyway, that family... She, they had been living here for a long time. Not him. He just arrived. Married a lady who had been here for a long time, Afghan family. And they knew the ropes. Anyway, they, they started um, um, uh, blackmailing him, saying, hey, if you don't give us money, we're going to send you back to Afghanistan, and uh, the, we're going to hire the Taliban to kill you. So um, over a one-month period, it was $1,000 a month that he had to give his wife's family. Oh. Or the fear was, as they said, they were going to have him sent back to Afghanistan. So anyway, he's working through that, and we're helping him, but prayer on that would be really good. And then the last thing we'll just say really quick, kind of end on a more positive note. There's a lady from uh, a country that's just east of Turkey called Azerbaijan, and so she, uh, we met her also through one of the, one of the organizations in um, helping them with driving. And she uh, went to our, our Friday, uh, the church that we attend, went to the Good um, Friday service and the Easter service, and she's been coming uh, every week since then. And so um, that's really exciting, and a Muslim lady. Uh, the Lord had given her a dream when she was 16 of a couple different things. One was a, a, a brown uh, cross, um, and the, but the other one was a, 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 this, this dream of Jesus, kind of like a, a doctor or a surgeon working on the brain of her friend, and she was assisting Jesus in working on her, her brains, oh, wow. her friend's brain. Isn't that interesting? So she's interested <laughs> in learning more and continues to go to church and learn more and more and uh, enjoys it and has a good time and is, is, wants to dive in on this journey. And I said, you know, we're so looking forward to helping you on your journey. Right now she's still a Muslim lady. We'll see. We'll just see. But prayer, we're talking about prayer requests at this point. So that would be a, a fourth a cool thing that's happening, but it's also a prayer request thing. Yeah. So it feels like it feels like we uh, probably need to wind it up. So let me pray. Let me let me say let me say this. Let me say this that um, it, uh, for me, we're from Southwest Missouri, so the Lord's called us to St. Louis. That's where that's where uh, we are now. But the responsibility that we each have is is real to make disciples. So let me let me read. Let me read. Um, the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go 
and make disciples of all nations. Those three things. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So the go, the make disciples, and the all nations. The nations are really the ethnic groups. The Lord's bringing those different ethnic groups here. Uh, 90, there's a, a missionary organization called Global Gates. Love to get on Global Gates, the website. And uh, they say that 90% of the world's least reached peoples have people from that people group who live in North America. So either, either the U.S. or China. 90%. Of the world's least reached people groups have people from their people group who live here in the U.S. or or Canada, and so uh, like we said before about reaching them here and helping them reach their friends and family with the social media where they talk with them every day. But the F, but the nations go and make disciples of all nations. The nations is the ethnic groups. Um, the make disciples is about. Um, Helping people, you know, learn and follow Jesus, being a learner and a follower of Jesus. That's what the Lord wants us to do. And I will say that in this, uh, the Great Commission, there's one um, uh, 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 command, and, and it's, it's not the go, it's the make disciples. The command is to make disciples. The go is like as you're going, as you're living your life, as you're, as you're, as you're going about your life, yeah. like the command that the Lord is giving us in the Great Commission right. is to make disciples disciples make learners and followers of Jesus and that's something that he, he has for all of us to do uh, to be part of you know making disciples not the fear the fear is is that people are going to think oh he hasn't called me to go somewhere and so that's part of the making disciples and so but that's n that's not it it's the making disciples is the command not to go somewhere far away. The go is as you're going. As we are going here in Raymore or Kansas City or St. Louis or whatever, we are to be making disciples. That's for everyone, all of us. And so um, I would just encourage you to think about, man, what, what, what people are around me, my neighbors, that maybe I can invite into my own home and get to know them and just ask questions and get to know them. That way they would love to talk about their culture, their religion. They would appreciate, and don't be afraid. They'll they'll have grace. They just they'll understand. You don't know if you don't be afraid about making mistakes. Just be genuine. And um, let me leave you with that, and, and let's pray for hearts that love people the way the Lord does. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your great love for us. Father, we want desperately. I I I want desperately for all of us to have the heart that you have. Help me have the heart for people that you have. Help me to love people the way you love people. Thank you for bringing people here that are hurting, that are lost, people who don't even know that they need you. You bring them here. Father, help us, especially in this day and age where they can so easily take the gospel back every single day to their friends and family on the phone. Father, help us to want to reach out to them, to care about how they don't know you. Help us to love them the way you love them, please. So, Father, help us to look for opportunities. Help us to look for the opportunities that you provide, whether that's the supermarket or our neighbor next door or someone who works you know, on the job with us. Help us to look for the opportunities for people who don't know you. Help us, Father. Help us. Help us. You want us to make disciples. You want us to make a, a learner and a follower of you, Jesus. Help us with that, please. Help us to have hearts that are willing to say, use me however you want to. All the glory and all the honor goes to you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Be exalted, Jesus. Be exalted. Be exalted. Jesus, bring so many more where they're going to be praising you around your throne, worshiping you and exalting you because you're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy. And we're going to forever, forever and ever. We're going to stand around and praise you and worship you and exalt you. Father, bring in folks from Afghanistan. Bring in folks from Saudi Arabia. Bring them in from Africa and other places in Asia and all around the world. Bring them in to you, to your fold, where they're going to praise you and stand around your throne and exalt you because you're worthy for that. Thank you so much.
In Jesus' name, we're going to move forward. Jesus, by your grace and with your help, we're going to move forward. We're going to move forward. And But every step of the way, whatever you have for us, whatever you have in our lives, however difficult it is, we're going to look to you for the help. And we're going to praise you through the difficult times and exalt you. And we're going to thank you that you sustain us and you bring us through those difficult times. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, he did escape one thing that we did not know until this while ago. He's a worship leader. See, so he, he, you notice how he come. He didn't come with his guitar, did he? He probably got out there in a the car. Thank you, brother, for bringing you and your family. We'll definitely, as a people here in Raymore, in this church, most definitely lift you up in prayer. And, you know, our heart is not to be just camping out in the church. Our heart is to reach the lost in this community and surrounding areas. And You know, it's just, it's just not about a Sunday saint and a Monday ain't. It's about, it's about doing the work God has called and equipped us to do. Amen. You know, we meet people every day. Sister Linda and Brother Tom and Brother Larry, you know, all of us meet people every day from different cultures and different walks of life and different struggles. You know, what they need is somebody to tell them some good news. Religion don't get it, you know, never has got it. But they need that relationship that's tangible that they can feel the embrace of a father that loves them deeply. We need that. We need that. We need that here. I pray, you know, I pray God in this church will stir our hearts even more. We got family members that's hurting, struggling, far away from God. You know, where do you start? You start at your home. You start in your loved ones. You start in a grocery store, wherever it may be. I'm telling you, friends, that's the heart of God. Where would you be today if it had not been for Jesus? Where would you have been when you were sick and in the hospital and the reports were not good if it had not been for Jesus? Somebody needs to be that concerned about us, amen. Jesus was. And he prayed, Lord, give me that heart like that. Give me that heart like that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take up uh, tithes and offerings here. Remember the missionary, Brother Armin, you can go ahead. So, Father, I thank you for what we're about to do, Lord. Uh, It's from the heart that we give because, Lord, you said you love a cheerful giver. Lord, I don't know anybody more cheerful than to see somebody raised up from a dark place in a terrible situation. Lord, that help comes just on time, right on time. Bless those that give today. Lord, bless the gift and the giver. Let it be used for your glory and for your praise and reach those, Lord, that we'll never see maybe this side of heaven. But we're looking forward for that great family reunion with the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. And the whole church said, give our, give our family here a big, big thank you, Lord. That boy's a preacher, ain't he? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a table he does have back there, so make sure you, you visit that as well. Amen. I like you got to tell another one next time I see you, okay? All right. <laughs> Give a hug on them a little bit. Don't let them get out of here without feeling a little love, amen?
think I said to the right eye, between you and me, something smells. <laughs>